Hey everyone, Revan here, and welcome back to a nice dreary day over here on Feed the Beast Universities, where today we're going to be getting into some deep mob learning. So sit back, enjoy the video, and let's see what we can't get done. So as we sit here and enjoy the wonderful minecraft weather that we are encountering right now uh i just want to talk about a few things with you guys uh that being one i'm finding issues with shader <laughs> mainly the shaders seem to like fog and other things don't necessarily turn up correctly on them uh as evidence down here i did a little bit of uh cleaning up and stuff but i made this screen and this is supposed to be a button however it's uh yeah not being all button-esque because of the fact that uh, i'm guessing because of the shaders but i also did some other work down here uh i extended our controllers and threw in a bunch of drives i also added in some fluid drives and stuff like that uh i moved our nuclear nuclear craft <laughs> nuclear uh craft machine over here and i added a few more of the mechanism machines over here specifically the metallurgic infusers which eventually i'm gonna actually have to get uh automated but uh that can wait for another period of time but i just wanted to kind of open this wall up uh because i did prep it uh, i have a blue cape 32 cables over here i didn't do a peter p on it just because i was like well chances are i'm not gonna have three 32 inputs on this i shouldn't say chances are there's no way i'm getting 32 channels on that also i re-hooked up our coke oven over here and i have it importing coal and extracting coal coke and then i just have the creosote oil being pumped into this tank and input into the system also made one of the dense infinity water sources from nuclear craft which if you're making it before you have ae good luck because the amount of water buckets that you need is pretty intense uh also made a weather obelisk but we don't actually have the fluids to power that i just wanted to see what it was because i don't think i've ever actually used it i also set up a uh rf tools builder over in the nether so that is actually pumping in lava right here uh seems to be a little bit bugged right now either that or it's finished one of the two i'm gonna have to go in there and check it but yeah the the chunk loading doesn't yeah it seems to be giving me issues uh this tank right here is just for show and then i have it pumping uh blood into this tank uh, mainly because of the fact that i don't think there's any use for the the blood in this pack at least it didn't show anything i know we have blood altars and everything like that and i'm saying a word that's you know probably gonna get flagged by youtube eight thousand times but hey i don't make money on these sub videos so i don't care uh, i also set was toying around with uh, annihilation plane planes and formation planes so this uh if it's hooked up what it'll do is this fluid interface uh i i don't have it set right now because i just you know was trying to figure out how I can turn it off and it turned out just disconnect it but if I drop a bucket of lava in there and a bucket of lava in here what it's going to do is it's going to every time a bucket of lava gets generated in the nether it would have pumped it out here uh spawned it in this block right here the water would have turned it into obsidian and the annihilation plane would have broken it and sucked it back up into the system so it was kind of a a way to generate obsidian but then i found out that obsidian actually does have a recipe so two buckets and two lava buckets will get me a block of obsidian it's you know more expensive than anything else but you know we have 105 i'm sorry 17,000 buckets of lava right now so that would have gone that's gonna go really quick if we just you know turn that all into obsidian uh the way that i have the buckets set up too is applied energistics has these things called fluid auto fillers so I just toss those up there and essentially what they'll do is when you turn a and when you toss water into a fluid drive uh like we have going on over here it'll automatically generate the uh it'll give you that option to, to craft a water bucket the, the issue is the system may not necessarily know how to make a bucket and or combine the two 
and you kind of need one of these for that so i have one of them for you know i have two of them just one for so i can do lava and water at the same point in time all right so that's about all i've done here i did also replace all of the cabling in the back i just essentially upgraded the, the energy conduit so nothing really changed there uh and then i brought this uh machine infuser over here from down on that end just because i i needed this space but i wanted to talk to you guys about something uh and that is i kind of want to pull the curtain back a little bit on the whole making of a youtube video and everything that goes into it uh because somebody brought something to my attention and it was you know it's something that i noticed watching other people's series and everything like that uh and and that's the fact that a lot of times when you watch YouTubers do these Minecraft series, it really does seem like they are progressing way faster than they should. Uh, you know, like I, there's a couple big YouTubers I watch and I'm just sitting there like, how the heck do these people get this much stuff done? Uh, and I'm gonna tell you, uh, we there's a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that goes on that doesn't make it into videos. Um, and I try to set like today I set up everything. I probably played the game for a good seven hours or so uh, Just trying to clean this place up and get everything set up and all the little odds and ends taken care of that I needed taken care of so that when I sat down tonight and recorded I could pretty much go straight through the recording without you know having to to stop and do multiple hours of grinding for this one item or You know stuff like that. It doesn't always work out that way but you know, just want to let you know that there's a lot of behind the scenes work that actually goes on. So if you're playing a pack and it just doesn't seem like you're progressing at the same pace as whoever it is that you're watching uh, and it discourages you in the least bit, just know that, you know, just stick with it. You know, it's Minecraft. There's a lot of grinding that goes into it and eventually you'll get there. So, and a lot of the mod packs, they also have, they also seem to be like somewhat, I don't want to say gated, but what will happen is like if we imagine drawing a straight line on our floor here, you'll start off and you know, 90% or the first like 30% of the pack will just, it'll just seem like you're not making any advancement. And then all of a sudden you'll hit like one pivotal mod in the pack that you can actually make like in most packs, it's the AE system. And then all of a sudden your pro your progress just skyrockets and it just, it's just off the charts and you progress super quickly. Uh, and that's, you know, it can feel very slow, uh, slow going in the beginning. So just stick with it. You'll get there. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to put that out there just cause I, you know, I don't know. I'm weird. Anywho, uh, today I want to get into deep mob learning. And the reason I want to get into deep mob learning is because of the fact that I need a trap door right there. <laughs> Squirrel. Anyways, uh, the reason I want to get to deep mob learning is I'm running out of blaze rods. Uh, we're also getting to the point where if we want to upgrade our environmental tech, we need nether stars. And I don't feel like taking out like 10,000 withers. Uh, so I want to be able to actually produce another star And deep mob learning actually does have that ability. So if we go to nether star, right? Normally you need to four soul sand and three weather wither skeleton heads and you'll get another star right but because deep mob learning's in here we can just use pristine wither matter and to get three three nether stars or we can use two wither skulls uh four soul sand and extraterrestrial matter and that'll give us another star as well so we'll have multiple ways to actually get another star from deep mob learning uh so i want to kind of get into that because the setup that I currently have in order for us to, you know, somewhat get in there is, yeah, look, <laughs> after eight times of flooding my base, I fixed it, is I made this guy over here, right? So he's just spawning in uh, wither skeletons. And the way that I made that spawner is, you know, of course I went to the nether, I captured a wither and a soul vial. I combined that in a soul binder with a broken spawner to get myself a wither spawner or wither skeleton spawner. And then I put that in a powered spawner. So eventually those guys are going out, but that's slow. I've only got 105 wither skulls. So I figure if we can speed that up with deep mob learning, it's going to be a lot help more helpful. Uh, normally in most packs, what I'll do is I'll do deep mob learning a lot earlier in the pack 
because of the fact that unlocks create a flight for you and the the armor is pretty good and the sword is pretty good too uh we already have create a flight we have mm, pretty good armor i'm not sure if the glitch armor is going to be any better and we were messing around with caliburn yesterday after after recording and yeah i got it up to 47 damage so and it's got sharpness five and everything like that on it um so it's uh yeah this this guy's pretty pretty good the only thing i will say is i have had it disappear on me so this is actually caliburn caliburn version 4.0 i actually had it disappear on me three times so as i was leveling it up you know i drop it in the water it would level up a stage i toss a smite five or sharpness five book on it uh, and then I toss it back in. Well, a couple times when I tossed it back in, three times to be exact, <laughs> after I already got the sword up to like level 30, uh, or not level 30, but 30 damage, it was just like, Bloop, nope, you don't get me anymore. And I cried a little bit inside. Uh, so I got this guy up to 47 and I was like, I'm not gonna push it anymore. But it pretty much one hits most of the mobs. So I'm not gonna complain about it. Uh, oh, we actually, speaking of which, fill up our attuned i've just been slowly working on these guys i don't really need them for anything but if i do ever want to get the the sword up higher i, I just want to have mana for that but all right let's get into deep mob learning so first off where are you in the actual in the actual quest so you're down here so you want me to get soot covered redstone so soot covered redstone is the main new craft blah 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 blah. uh left creaking redstone on a block of coal right all right, so we just got the coal and oop, we'll just right click on it like we're trying to break the block so it doesn't seem to work too well if you just hold down so you kind of have to each time you have to click on it so i'm just going to go through this and make up a, a couple stacks of our suit covered uh, redstone all right so the next thing it wants is we need to make our deep learner so this is what we're actually going to use uh to store our data modules and yeah <laughs> there's not much else to that so you know for deep mob learning what you need to do is you need to make a data module for a specific mob zombie creeper skeleton whatever and then you need to go around and politely ask those mobs to vacate your world with a very long and sharp object uh and once you do that as long as you have a data module on you uh in like your offhand or something like that it, it'll count towards progress and it'll level up that data module uh, the deep learner what that does is it allows you to store more than one data module at a time so you could have i think five of them or something like that in there well we're about to find out and then if i just go out at night every you know most of the mobs that i'm going to encounter are going to give me progress when i gently and very carefully and politely ask them to vacate my world uh so yeah so let's get this let's get this guy going we're going to need some soot covered plates which are just going to be obsidian and soot covered redstone there we go we'll just start with a stack i guess there we go and then we're also going to need a bunch of redstone repeaters 18 sounds like a good number to me and i'm sure we don't have any glass panes there we go we have our deep learner and then we need to actually go in and grab some blank data modules so again we you pretty much are going to have uh, a data module for just about every every mob that's going to be actually in the game unless you're playing one of those packs that's just really outlandish and has all these uh unique and unique mobs in it but you know we have the zombies the skeletons the creepers the the spider slime blah 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 all the way up to like the ender dragon and stuff like that but each one of them all have the same thing in common they need data modules so we're gonna start with three off the bat mainly because of the fact that the things that i'm gonna have access to right away uh the zombie is a good one to start off with because the zombie will is easy to get through the trials uh which we'll get to later uh then but for in our case we're gonna need a blaze and we're gonna need a wither skeleton we're gonna need to you know politely ask a bunch of those guys to leave our world as well so we need all three of these and normally they're fairly easy to make the zombie is just uh rotten flesh in one of the mo blank modules uh the blaze is just a little bit of blaze powder so there we go and then we need wither skeleton which we can get this guy right here now i'm not sure what this pack is actually going to have for the wither data module all right so it does 
require another star. And I am going to be curious to see what this one creates, creates at. Cause a lot of times, uh, the wither data module may actually come out at a basic level and a lot of packs they have it defaulted that way. So you don't actually have to go out and, you know, take out five or 15, uh, withers at the same, you know, to, before it ever, before it ever reaches the ability to be turned it. Ha, uh, ha, ha. Uh. So you don't have to take out a lot of them before you toss them into a processing unit. Anyways. Oh boy. All right. Next thing. Simulation chambers. Simulation chambers are exactly what they sound like. It's a fake fight, right? So you're tossing your data module in there. Uh, and it is in itself in the computer AI is politely asking a zombie creeper, whatever the data module is in there to vacate your world. And in doing so, it is getting a reward of some type of matter, whether that be extraterrestrial or whether that be overworldian uh, or so on and so forth. Plus, the higher the level of your data model, the higher the chance that you can get pristine matter, which will actually give you real rewards when you turn that in. So we need to get this guy. We need a machine. We'll just make two of these real, real quick. We're going to need a couple comparators. There we go. We have our two simulation chambers. Then we're going to need polymer. Polymer is going to be like the catalyst for everything. So we're just going to need to grab a stack of that. And then let's also say we want to make a recipe for this so that we can, we can try to, we can try to get this guy automated. Although polymer is not necessarily a hard thing to make, but we have that. We might as well utilize it. All right. So next step, uh, we have the trials, which we don't need to get into right now. But then we have these uh, loot fabricators. Now, these are the things that you're going to toss the pristine matter into. Uh, and that'll give you give you different items. So we're going to need some yellow dye and some more of these soot covered machines. All right. Had to go out and grab some dye, but let's grab this. We got two loot fabricators. Perfect. And it wants us to get a pristine matter, which we're actually going to have to go out and <laughs> try to get. Uh, the next step is going to be the lively matter or the living matter. Uh, so this, as I said, you have overworld in matter, which you're going to get from zombies and everything like that. Uh, creepers, stuff that you're going to find in the overworld. Hellish matter, it's going to be usually be stuff that comes from the nether. So blaze, uh, wither skeletons, zombie pigment, those type of things will give you the hellish matter and extraterrestrial matter usually, uh, is going to come from Enderman. <laughs> Not really sure how else to say that. Uh, so we should probably grab a data module for an Enderman as well. There we go. So now we can take all of our data models modules and we can hold four of them inside of our uh, deep learner. And we just put that in our offhand. So now when we go out and we're doing our things, we just kind of uh, we'll, we'll get we'll get experience as we're doing it. And these guys, we can just toss right here. So we'll take our two loot fabricators and we'll toss them right there. And then our simulation chambers will be right there. So every time you build a data module, like I mentioned before, uh, it's going to start off at a faulty level. I don't know about the higher levels in this game. We'll find out when we get there, but like the, the more common mobs are all going to start out at faulty. So if we were to take this and toss this in our a uh, loot fabricator. It says insufficient. You need to have at least basic or better. So that means that we need to go out and hunt us some zombies before we can actually start running this through to actually get a chance of getting the pristine matter. So what I'm going to do is because it's the middle of day, I'm just going to come down here. And I'm going to take out some of these guys. Ow. So I'm just going to take out some of these diamond spikes and take on a few of these withers with hopefully just not not murking myself on the spikes to slowly build up our wither deep learner while it's still day out okay so as you can see in the upper left hand corner of the screen uh i have my zombie module up to basic and i have the wither already up to superior uh and i just wanted to kind of show you how the simulation chambers here work so if i take my zombie data module over here 
and I toss it inside one of my simulation chambers and give it one polymer. There we go. It is going to run a simulation in which I have a 5% chance uh, of getting pristine matter. Now this chance will go up as the tier goes up. Uh, I'll try to explain that before, but I just have a feeling like it came out horribly wrong since you couldn't actually see anything. But yeah, so I do get a piece of overworld in matter and, and my data module is still at basic because if I look at data collected, it says I need 48 data collected, right? So before, if, if you saw it said it had one more to go, but that's talking about if I were to politely ask a zombie to vacate my world, that would count as one. However, in the deep mob learner, each simulation, it only counts. Uh, it's like a quarter of a politely asking to leave. <laughs> so if I run three more simulations, that should uh, account for the missing data and it should base uh, up my tier to advanced, I believe. So let's have this go through and see what we get. All right, this is just about ending here. So our tier is now advanced. So it's gonna be running one more simulation at the advanced tier. And so far we've only gotten three overworlding matters, which is kind of expected from a 5% chance. However, now with advanced tier, we have an 11% chance of getting pristine matter. Um, however, that also, <laughs> did not come through. Now the overworld in matter can be used for a few things, right? So we can make lots of odd bits, odds and ends uh, from the overworld string gunpowder pretty much, but it can also be used to craft hellish matter. So for overworld in matter plus another rock gets me one hellish matter and pretty much the same thing for extraterrestrial. So we can, if we had a stockpile of overworld in matter, we could theoretically turn that into extraterrestrial. It's just my opinion not really worth it because <laughs> the amount that you need uh and the offset of like the how much clay and gravel and lapis and everything like that you're gonna need so another way to advance in deep mob learning that this is usually the way that i like to go especially for the zombie um is actually doing trials so the trial keystone we're gonna need a soot covered machine and then we're also gonna need a trial key which is an ender pearl two diamonds and some iron nuggets there we go and we now have our keystone along with the keystone we are actually going to need a few more of these trial keys because we need to attune the trial keys to whatever the trial it is we want uh, aka in this case we want to fight zombies so we need to go need to to hit a zombie while holding one of these keys uh, tip for you when you're leveling up try to put all but one of your keys in a backpack or something like that Ooh, and we did get a lot of polymer <laughs> nice i'll just toss you in there all right, so let's go attune this key to a zombie real quick, just so I can kind of show you what the perks of running the trials are. I believe this just needs to be in your inventory and you can't, you don't hit the mob. You actually need to take them out. So we now have an attuned key and this key is going to get the same tier as whatever my data module is. So the moment my data module advances, uh, this key will also advance. And the reason I say don't have multiple keys in your inventory, especially when you're starting this off, is because of the fact that like, if I had five keys in my inventory and I started doing the trials at basic tier, uh, which on some maps you'll do, cause it's hard to find zombies, then I'd have five basic tier keys and you can't change the tier of a key once you actually have it. So it's just better off to do it like one at a time. Then you can just, go into if you really want to you could bring another key with you into the arena uh or wherever you did de you decide that you're gonna <laughs> fight your mobs this guy right here i think should be big enough this is one of the prefab buildings uh i just changed some of the the stone with nether bra nether brick just to kind of give it a little bit more color but this is a trial you just set it down and then you need to make sure that you have a 15 by 15 area around it that nothing is blocking meaning that if i were to put a torch down here like that for light it the trial wouldn't start because it would be being seen as being impeded so if we take our make sure we have our zombie data module there we toss this in our hand and we take our key that we just attuned and we toss it in here it'll start running us through uh like i think three or four waves or something like that of zombies so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab one more key just because i'm not sure if we're gonna get up a superior with this 
and just so that we get another t key attuned as we're going through this. So if we push that on and our reward, we're going to get five zombie matter, but we also have the chance of getting glitches. So as you see, we have our key here. Let me take this out. If I look at it in my inventory, every time you attune a key, it gets like a random roll on it. And so you can have things like loot hoarders, re something called regen party, which is you'll hear like a glass break and there'll be bubbles in the ground. If you stand in it, your health regens. Uh, but the one that we like is something called empowered glitches, which means normally you need to have a superior uh, level data module in order for a glitch to come in. But if you have an effect, one of your keys is affixed with empowered glitches or some other type of glitch, you have a chance of a glitch spawning in your game before you get up to superior or self-aware tier, I'm sorry, which is the highest. So we can do this to actually get the glitch sword, which gives us lots of cool stuff. Mainly it gives us more experience or more data when we're taking out mobs. So this is a little bit cheesy with this sword because the sword does so much damage and the mobs run away from it. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not too concerned about it, but yeah, normally you don't have to run this much. They usually chase you down. Also getting a lot of lag from these shaders. <laughs> Lure them in by taking the sword off the hot bar. I'm not holding the sword. Look at me. All right, so we didn't get any glitches that time around, but we are actually only eight eight zombies away from the next the next tier. So this key we can really just throw away because we can go to our zombie spawner that we have, get the next eight kills, and oh, I said the word that I'm not supposed to say. Dang it! Uh, get the eight x, then eight, get eight more zombie data, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll be up at the all ready for the next level. But let me show you what this pristine matter can do. So if I come to this loot fabricator here and I toss you in, I can choose what I want from the pristine matter. So it's a zombie. So all the loot that we're going to be getting is going to be related to a zombie. So zombies drop rotten flesh. They have a chance of dropping iron. They have a chance, chance of dropping carrots and potatoes. So therefore I can pick one. If I select iron, it's going to pump out 16 iron and this is going to remember this so the next time i put in a pristine matter it's not going to ask me what i want it's just going to say hey last time you wanted that so i'm going to give it to you this time so you can just clear that out but i'm going to finish leveling up this data module over here and then i'm going to do a couple more trials uh at the superior level or once i get up to that and i'll show you what happens when you actually get to the glitch themselves so give me one sec guys all right, we are just finishing up wave six of our self-aware tier with, oh my God, the lag. All right, we are uh, just finishing up our self-aware trial here. Just got to take out the rest of these guys. I had a massive lag spike. Uh, I know I mentioned this once before, but I'm actually starting to get worried that whether or not I'm actually going to feel to finish this pack. <laughs> like it's getting laggier and laggier and laggier. Uh, so I'm not liking that. Uh, there's something in this pack that's not. Huh. There was no glitch or anything like that. That's kind of weird. Anyways, uh, we completed a self-aware. So we ended up with three glitch hearts. I did get one other glitch heart, uh, from one of the, uh, superior tier guys. It was, uh, corrupted glitch appeared is what is what it tells you. And then that guy just drops one. So you only get three at the end of self-aware, but you can take out a glitch and get one to drop one glitch hard to drop. Now these guys, if I'm not mistaken, uh, which I'm never mistaken, it's a complete and horrible light. All right. So if we grab a piece of obsidian here and I believe we just need to bash these guys on the obsidian. There we go. So we ended up with 12 unstable glitch fragments. So we get three unstable fragments from each one of the corrupted glitch hearts. Now these guys right here are going to be utilized uh, kind of like Fluix crystals, right? So we'll toss them in water and we'll get out a glitch infused ingot. Bucket of water. 
lapis unstable and those guys and i have a magnet on don't i <laughs> yes i do there we go back up a little, little bit let it do its thing and boom we ended up with 12 of these glitch fragments so in order to get the full glitch armor and to pretty much unlock creative flight uh it's we really only have to run the tri trial like two or three times at the uh, self-aware mode and as you can see it's not the most difficult thing on, on a normal world yeah it's not going to be the, like super fun but it's pretty easy to get through it plus there are secrets and things and things and secrets that you can do to make it a lot easier uh <laughs> one of them being um fences that's right so the there's like this little glitch where it's not really a glitch but if so the the trial itself needs a 15 by 15 area so that means that if you put a fence at this the, like a 16 by or a 17 by 17 block around where the, the trial is theoretically if you were to be on the outside of that fence you're still technically within the trial radius so as you saw i was going all the way to the edge and i was just fine if you go too far like if you go 18 or 19 blocks um then the trial says that you're out of bounds and it'll actually end but as long as you stay within that like right next to the fence you can just sit there and take out the zombies and they can never touch you um so it's a little bit of a <laughs> a little bit of a cheesy doodle type of thing okay so the only thing that we really need to do for this now is make ourselves a glitch sword there we go and the neat thing about this is it starts off with 10 hp or 10 damage right which is nothing near our sword however as you're going around taking out mobs and gaining data on a data module it this sword grows in strength so i've gotten this sword up to like 30 or 40 before just on its own and then you can enchant it as well plus uh you get extra xp when you do take out mobs with it so like normally i'd get i get four data uh per dispatch however with the sword i'm gonna get eight data so it's a lot easier to get to make your way through it so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna turn on i think i turned it off. i think i just turned it off i'm gonna turn on my wither farm and i'm gonna come down here and try to like level up not only my wither data all the way up to the next level but i also want to level up my uh try to level up my glitch sword a little bit here this should be the last of the glitch that we actually need. Now let me turn you back on. And I think the only thing we really need to do for deep mob learning is actually finish up our armor here. So let me just make these guys real quick. So we get the pants, we get the boots, the helmet and the chest plate. There we go. Now, as I mentioned, this is stuff is, is not aught, is not the best armor, right? The good thing about it is, oh, we got a trophy. <laughs> Ooh, piece of candy. Uh, the good thing is it unlocks creative flight. So right now we have flight because we're using our angel ring. So if we toss this guy away, we no longer have flight. But the moment we were to swap our armor, we now have complete creative flight that doesn't actually depend upon... Uh, any type of like GP or, or anything like that. It's just free creative flight. Ooh, free mana. But yeah, that is why in most packs, I actually go through deep mob learning relatively quickly if it's there. Uh, this pack didn't really have to do it because it's got the angel ring and it made it really easy for us to get it. But like in a lot of skyblock packs where you actually need to go out to the nether, you need to hunt down a gas, you need to kind of whittle it down, which is really hard to do if you don't have creative flight already. Uh, it's a lot usually easier to just go through the, the deep, deep mob learning route and getting all this glitch armor. Um, so the other thing that this glitch armor does is when we're wearing this, we have an 18% chance to drop two pristine matters uh, when a data module gains data. So that means if we're leveling up a data module and we, we take out like a zombie or something like that on the way up, we have a, almost a 20% chance of getting pristine matter just from that. So it's pretty cool armor, not gonna lie. And I've used it multiple times. 
Now the glitch sword, uh, we just leveled up our Enderman all the way up to self-aware. Also, I don't have my flight anymore. Yeah, we did that the, the exact same way. Oh, hey. We did that the exact same way that we did the Wither Skeleton. I just made an Enderman spawner right there. I took out the spikes and I went in there with the glitch sword and it took me about mm, five minutes, I'd say tops to actually get all the way up to self-aware. So yeah. So now if we need some ender pearls or if we need some, let's grab you and let's grab you. All right, so let's say we, we want a wither skulls. So in order to get the wither skulls, we need pristine matter. So we'll toss this in at self-aware. We have a 42% chance of getting pristine matter. So we'll do the same thing with this and we'll just run this through. It's not gonna be the fastest thing in the world, but we'll run this through this stack of polymer. And look right there, we have pristine wither skeleton matter. So we take this, we toss it in and we can say, hey, I want 18 wither skull heads. And just like that, we have 18 wither skull heads. Now, the good thing about the Enderman one is it's also gonna be getting us this extra terrestrial matter as it goes through. So we can actually utilize our wither skull heads plus the uh, plus the, the matter that we're getting from from that one the extraterrestrial from the enderman and we can make nether stars just like that so a little bit of soul sand extraterrestrial matter and two soul we can actually do this right now just come over here and say nether star Boom. We now have three nether stars without ever facing a wither. Now I am going to go through the whole process of getting a wither. Um, what I'll end up doing is just making this blank data module, right? Where are you? Wither data and sacrificing one of our nether stars that we got. And I'll just go someplace like, I still haven't gone to the end. So I might go to the end, take out the Ender Dragon, and then just kind of cheese the, uh, the the dispatching of Withers underneath the portal there. Because I'm not sure if you've ever done like vanilla uh, Wither takey outiness. You know, if you go to the the roof of the of the Nether, you can find certain areas where if you spawn the Wither underneath it, it essentially gets trapped. It's the same thing directly underneath the end portal. You just dig that out. You put down a couple pieces of obsidian that aren't going to get blowed up when the thing goes kaboom and you can just sit there and spawn in withers over and over again and take them out and that way i can level up my wither data module uh probably up to superior and then just run it through the simulation chamber uh to get the rest of the way there but yeah we made it all the way through deep mob learning i do have a little bit further to go like i said i got to do the withers i have to do the blaze the withers are a second thought we can work on that later the blaze is a big thing that I need because I've been running out of blaze powder. But yeah, all in all, we did pretty good this episode. Not 100% sure what we are actually going to work on next episode. I'm going to have to look around the base and see where, what we need to do. We're kind of at that point in the pack where we can do just about whatever we want. But I'm also the type of person I like working towards something that's going to make my life easier or better. So it's a quality of life thing for me that I want to work on. Uh, so I'm not sure. We have a few more mo magic mods to get into. We have a bunch more tech mods uh, that I can get into. How much those are going to help me progress, I'm going to have to look into a little bit. But yeah, we're going to call it there, guys. So as always, hey, if you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It helps me out greatly. And until next time, stay safe, be awesome, and we'll see you guys in the next episode.